see these slides are going to be pretty general because we were hustling to put them together. Mm -hmm. But we have materials on COVID. What I'd like people to do, go to the archivemass.org where we're posting things as quickly as we can. And the website is called thearchofmass.org or archmass.org, both work slash COVID-19. And we'll, we'll reinforce that later, okay? Thank you. You're welcome. And I'll make sure it's on the screen. I didn't type it in this time. Um, so basically, uh, <coughs> resources for agencies from the federal piece is really huge because um, they have a potentially uh, getting benefits from forgiveness loans, so to keep people on payroll. We're in a bit of a double bind in our field. So there's, the way I look at our world and I look at our constituency, there's folks that are served through traditional agencies and providers, and there's folks that are not. They're either at personal care attendant services, right, or they were in school, maybe getting some family support. Those folks are connected to the service system in some way. So th there's really two sort of vehicles, right, to work with people and to give support to people. Um, we were worried that the whole service system was at risk, um, and we still are worried because of the personal protection equipment that that hasn't gotten resolved. If any of you saw the press conference last night, they really, I don't think it was really, um, the facts of the situation were not clear from the press conference last night. How's that for me characterizing it? Um, the, the folks on the ground in the states at the healthcare settings, um, they're saying they don't have enough personal protective equipment, masks, gloves, so on and so forth. I can tell you in our world, in the human, forget healthcare, right? Which is screaming for the, for the products. There was a Boston Globe article, which we'll post on Facebook, which pretty much outlines the fears people have going to people's homes. But guess what? The families have the same fears. They're worried that a personal care attendant or home health person is going to come in if they don't have the proper personal protection, gloves, whatever, that there's they, their son, their daughter, their brother, their sister can get the COVID virus. So we, I know uh, the good news is um, I trust that this administration, Health and Human Services, are working feverishly on this but we need to have more products. And I wanna give a special shout out to Northeast Arc on the call today because a whole bunch of sanitizers came for a bunch of people, a bunch of agencies and some families. And over the next few weeks, agencies across the state will be working to get more product into the state. But we really need the federal government to, to get on some adrenaline around this. So um, within a few weeks uh, or within a week even, our, our folks can be protected agencies that have in-home services like community residences, staff departments, they're trying to keep up with this. And I'm impressed with what some of the organizations are doing, checking to make sure temperatures are taken every day, twice a day, checking to make sure people are letting people know about symptoms. So those are the kinds of things that are really important. And I'm gonna talk about those before we go into questions and answers. I'm gonna go backwards for a minute, if I can. And I just went backwards with the wrong um, file. <laughs> I'm just gonna give you a sense. So in the past, if you look at this screen, as of yesterday, this was the email we got from MEMA. There's almost nearly 5,000 cases in our state. There's 48 deaths. And there's been almost 40,000 people tested. So, so it looks like a little over 10% of folks tested do have the virus. Um, we still don't have enough tests. Again, that's a whole other issue. Uh, that again, I thought the press conference yesterday didn't really give the right picture. Um, p this new test will be great when it gets here, but right now we're really concerned about that and, and need to have them. So that's the that's situation in Massachusetts. And then finally, the, for folks at home. So, so number one, there's the service system with agencies providing residential care. And we have about 10 to 11,000 people in that service system that have intellectual developmental disabilities that are getting supported staff departments and homes. Some of those folks have gone home to family members, okay? And by the way, that doesn't include the several thousand in residential schools across the Commonwealth. And I'd be exaggerating that number, it might only be a couple of thousand, but that's quite a few people. Some of those people are at home now because people were nervous to keep them at the residence. So, and then there's a whole bunch of folks that maybe were not maybe, they were in a local education district, whether in the public school or in a private day school, they're at home, okay? So 24 seven. And then to make it a little more complicated, there's gotta be somewhere in the ballpark of 20,000 adults, of which maybe several thousand need activities of daily living care daily, or they're in acute behavioral condition, 
or they have complex medical conditions living with family at home right now. So we've been talking with the administration regularly about this issue, uh, but this is sort of the situation that um, I'm sharing with you. The, the screen on the right, the piece on the right tells you that people, what the situation was in family homes already, the reporting in terms of the amount of care and the stress and missing medical appointments, and that tracks pretty well with the other piece of the slide, which is from the Associated Press um, and, and North that talk about caregivers. Um, and that study, I think, was focused on uh, people taking care of all the caregivers. But they had the same kinds of statistics then that the ARC and the University of Minnesota found. Um, let me tell you about the state's su summary and then in terms of the work we still need to do. Uh, I mean, the good news is you see improvements every day, every week. And, and that's the good news in our state. I have, a, I have a lot, a high degree of confidence of how people are working with people, both at the Department of Development Services, Mass Health, Mass Rehab Commission, and others, as well as the folks at Executive Office of Health and Human Services. So I want to thank them publicly, state agencies. I also want to talk, thank the private agencies for what they're trying to do. Um, some have developed platforms that have day programs to communicate during the day. But, so, but we know more needs to be done. This is a crisis and you just got to keep, you know, working at it. And that's what the organizations are doing. That's what families are doing. That's what folks in the home health and personal care end are doing. So much took place uh, in the past week, stabilized service system. So providers don't have to worry how they're going to pay staff. They can keep staff on board. Um, there's a mechanism to do that, whether you're in a day program or a residential program. Family support agencies have been supported. And for, for those of you on the call, Family support agencies are the first line of access. Um, if someone has a question, though, I think eventually, if, if, well, not eventually, if you're already in touch with your day program provider, please don't hesitate to use them for information referral and assistance. And don't wait till the situation gets urgent. We're really trying to encourage people from here. You can, we can get support. There's been all kinds of decisions made to get support out there. So don't hesitate till it's urgent. Um, I also you know, want to commend special education um, De DESE, Department of Elementary and, Ed and Secretary of Education for them getting on the move and de delivering a new guidance to local school districts, uh, which we felt were, you know, avoiding their responsibility. There's more to be done there, but it's, it's in the right direction. And, uh, <clears throat> and then we have a post for those of you that are concerned about that. There's a post that takes you, and if it's not up today, it'll be up by the end of the day, we hope, to the SPAN Mass site where you can see the Friday webinar that was done on both what is the status of special education now and where should it be going. So at spanmass.org. And then there's a letter that was organized, the Center for Public Representation and several other groups. I mean, I, I think it's a ton of groups on that letter and were included somewhere in there, asked, asking the administration to you know, safeguard against healthcare triage uh, and people with disabilities. So in other words, what we're trying to say is our population is potentially at risk across the board whether they have an intellectual disability, developmental disability, physical disability, um, any kind of disability, mental health condition, um, behavioral condition, that we really need to make sure we're fairly treated, get equity in the healthcare system during the crisis. And finally, obviously federally it's been stalled, but we need personal protective equipment for healthcare and human services. So that's, that's those pieces of it. I also wanna give you a heads up um, on the other webinars that'll happen this week, and I'll leave that up there. And I probably should go in there and update the file and put the COVID-19 in writing, okay? So I'm gonna, up, I'm gonna escape and go down here and just type in co uh, what our website is, okay? So um, somebody, there was a question, Carrie, I'm gonna answer first that came in early. And, and the question was um, from, someone that feels pretty, you know, doesn't know what to do. I'm going to read it for people so they'll see what it, what the question was. Um, and I'm going to Word to find, I saved it. Um, she, her question is, people don't seem to be taking this thing serious. So how do I keep myself from being infected when I need to take the ride to go to the supermarket and Walmart? Although I'll be getting up early, take advantage of the times designated for seniors to shop. Hey, by the way, I've been doing that. I'm 65 and I've been trying to take advantage of that though. It's, you got to get in there before 7:30. Um, but I still feel overwhelmed with the overload of contradictory information. 
because of my age and compromised immune system. And, and I think, you know, hopefully, I don't know how many of your calls, uh, how many on the call you can chat or raise your hands, have sanitizer, have plastic gloves. You know, a lot of that went out early. I think, you know, if you don't have that, if when I go to the setting, I put on my gloves from the winter, okay? And I wash, I just washed all my grocery bags, but some supermarkets are not allowing uh, used bags to come in the store anymore. I think what you, if, as long as you're being extra careful, as, and, and obviously you want to minimize your engagement, you want to minimize being out there, you want to keep six feet away from people if at all possible. Sometimes you're going to have to walk across someone in an aisle in a supermarket, they're going to be within three feet. I'm always surprised when people don't get out. You know, I wait, you know, and I'm always surprised when people are sort of slowly walking around and not getting out of the way or moving their cart. Um, but um, I found that, you know, I, I'm just, I'm just really aggressive. Now, now if you're absent-minded, yeah, I, I would be a little more nervous, but I must have washed my hands six times this morning between going to the supermarket, driving, coming back. Um, and I did have to stop in the office today. Um, and I was, I was careful there. I must have used the sanitizer three times already in the office. So I think that's the things. And, and if you make it rote, um, I have to admit, yeah, I have some things going on too, but maybe not as um, compromised as other people, obviously. You know, I worry about folks that are being served in the residences that have medical complications as well, right? Um, we, just need, we just need to wash our hands a lot if we don't have sanitizer and we don't have gloves, but winter gloves, washing them every day, that probably makes a lot of sense, things like that. Um, and walking outside, I, I don't, again, I don't think we're gonna get it from the leaves and the trees. Um, so as long as we stay away from people, and that I've noticed in my neighborhood, I've noticed people, like I'll go onto the street, if people are coming by, but I've also noticed other people waiting on a corner. And um, so I do think people should take it seriously. I agree with you. I do think if we're careful, um, we should be fine, you know, and, and I think that's the key to keep our, you know, follow the instructions on social distancing and go out as little as possible in terms of congregate settings. Um, and I can tell you our policy here at the office is a few people at a time. And it's in that way in this, you know, rel not a big building, small building, but still pretty hard to run into each other. Um, so those are the kinds of things we're doing um, and, and uh, that are important. And again, if, I would be even less concerned if we had, if the federal, I mean, this thing's been going on since late December, early January. This is April 1st almost. Like where is, what are we doing federally? Why are states competing with other states for sanitizers and gloves? I mean, this is, this is sort of crazy, you know, the situation. It, and it's, it's, it's wrong. And what bothered me about yesterday on the press conference was it just wasn't honest, okay? And, and that's all I'll say, I'll leave it there. Um, so. So anyway, don't worry, we're gonna do fine. We're gonna get through this together. My brother-in-law is 75, uh-oh, he's in Colorado, he had it. He has had some stuff uh, medically in the past and he's recovered really well. And Colorado, the air, you know, it's high up there. Um, so that's, that's just an example of someone who's doing well. And we just heard about self-advocate who had, in a group home who had it, who's recovering well. They're, you know, we're waiting to hear about someone else who's older is complicated hopefully he'll make through it okay but people are are getting them and people are trying to respond effectively so Kerry, you want to help me with the question other questions and or comments? sure uh yeah we have um a question from peter um has the commonwealth proved any temporary increase in pca hours for disabled individuals um so this is this is a great question there's there's three answers to that if you are in a school program, let's start with the easy one. E well, I don't know if they're easiest. The last one will be the hard one. Um, you basically would kick in your vacation hours that have been deemed uh, based on previous evaluations. Now, here's the hitch. If you're behaviorally complex and don't need physical prompting, <laughs> um, so if you're a parent with a son that's 15, it's home, now, what, 30 hours more a week? okay, or was even in residential schools at home 24 hours and not just on weekends. Um, you will only get what you would have gotten for his or her help with activities of daily living. You know, that's what the PCA program is. Um, Couldn't get a change in the short term. Can we make some changes? That's what we're advocating for, right? 
But if you had a physical disability and you already have vacation hours booked, it's significantly right because now you're home full time, you're going to get those hours. In the those of you in day, day haves programs or family members who have day have persons in day have programs, you will automatically get reviewed for up to six hours by the PCM. So if you haven't contacted your personal care management agency, please do it. Um, <clears throat> and it has to obviously be justified that you need the care for six hours a day. But again, the bad news is you're not going to get it for just behavioral monitoring. Okay. You're not going to only if the behaviors affect your physical ability, which in some cases they do. Um, finally, there's a third category of maybe people who, who do, can justify more hours that, you know, for any reason, again, and again, it has to meet the PCA criteria or the home health criteria. You will then get approved, hopefully, um, uh, not hopefully, it's case by case. And as long as you meet that criteria for more hours, that's fine. Finally, a couple of pieces of good news. Again, a big thank you to Mass Health and the folks secretariat. One is you will get, um, you, you will be able to, the cap's gone for overtime. So that means if you only have one staff person who's not sick or you have one, in, you know what I mean? You're going to be able to go a gazillion hours with that person if you have those hours approved. Secondly, you can use home health. That, that's automatically approved. Now, admittedly, that might mean someone different coming in a few times a week. You may not like that. I, I wouldn't, but at least that's an option. And in talking to Mass Health, you know, the training they get around protection and stuff is, is pretty good. Not an ideal situation, but this is not an ideal situation. It's a healthcare crisis. So again, we're trying to figure out some more strategies around this. The, and people seem open. Um, had a call with Mass Health during the day that went well. I thought they gave a great review. And I also talked privately with someone there uh, at 6 p.m. on Friday to talk about this issue, people at home who don't fit, quite fit the uh, programs, right? But need more support. And there's an openness to discuss it and figure something out. And they know we have to start it now before things get crazy at homes. Um, the second thing is DDS has approved extra stipends, extra support. So if, I'm, if you're in that situation, I wouldn't mess around. I would call your family support program ASAP. And we do have the link on our webpage for that. So please do it and uh, don't hesitate. And it's not an ideal situation because only so many, so much dollars, whatever, that are there and through that vehicle, but it's at least a start uh, to solve the issue. What else? Okay. Thanks, Leo. Um, this is more of a comment, but um, Northeast Arc-run businesses have a reopen date of next Tuesday. The earlier you announce a date change, the better for these adults and families. In many cases, it would be unsafe for some of these workers who have immunity, immune deficient issues return to work at this time. Great, great point. Uh, you know, they've been yeah, and you're right. All uh, the organizations will send out an email, not just to the chapters they are, but other organizations and encourage them to get a new posting out soon. I, you know, they've had their hands full, so I'm sure um, there's a certain level of, um, I think people, they will get the news that I think uh, just realistically, given what was announced yesterday and what Governor Baker announced, pushing the school thing to May, what, 4th, um, I would expect that to be the date. I could be wrong. But, um, you know, maybe they'll do it two weeks at a time. But um, I would expect that's just, you know, I hear it. I would not expect anyone to be opening. Uh, a couple of organizations had, had more than a couple. One of our other affiliates, at least, had an April date, early April date. And it's just not going to happen. But they are going to be reaching out. And, and I'm sure they have reached out already to individuals and families. But good point. We'll, we'll encourage people to get an update out there sooner. Thank you. Okay. And then Inga um, it wrote in, my daughter just got on SSI and for 2019, she had earned income, but was not required to file taxes because those taxes were withheld that she needed to get refunded. Yeah. Can we file a, can we file a return and then she'd be eligible to get some of that? Yeah, if I were you, I'd file it anyway. You know, I mean, I, I would file it now. Work. Okay. Um, that would be my strategy. Um, that's basically the material. Okay, just leave it, honey. Just leave it. You want to mute. If you could mute, that would be great. Uh, but that's sweet, though. It's nice to hear uh, some sounds as well. Um, but anyway, I want to suggest um, 
Yeah, you do it anyway. I don't know if it'll work at this point, but if it's, I would do it, right? I don't think it can hurt. Okay, great. Um, Anna uh, Krieger uh, shared 18 groups uh, joined the Center for Public Re Representation letter about rationing, and she posted a link in the chat pane um, so that you can uh, That's great, that. Anna. Thank, Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Awesome. And then Kathy um, no also said that for an older caregiver, connect with your local area aging on uh, our Mass Executive Office of Elder Affairs if you need help. Both, um, and then and then also Kathy shared that both state and federal filing dates have been extended to July 15th. Okay. Any other questions? You want to chat in. Give it a minute. I'm going to go back to the slide here so you, you can all see the next dates that are happening. Um, I'm going to double check the link. Oh, I put the uh, slash the wrong way. That's the problem. I knew I did something wrong. So we'll fix that. And then we're looking, we're hoping to get the it updated today, obviously, with more updates and information. So um, all right, Carrie. Yes, yeah, so I think we're good. Um, I didn't get any. Okay. Oh, oh, thank. You. All right. Here we go. Uh, Sophia, really impressed with all the organizations jumping to help families. Would it be possible to remind the ARC support. affiliates doing family support on how we need to a reality really be proactive about helping families? Yeah, and that's. I'm glad, Sophia, you brought that up because that's that's one of the goals. Um, not only the chapters of the ARC, but other organizations to really um, the next level. Now, now, mind you, everyone involved in residential services is probably going to have their hands full with apartments and homes. They're just trying to, it's week two of staying on top of not only just normal operations, but the whole virus issue. And those agencies that have day programs, they've been helped immensely by their day program staff being on the ground. Um, and I, and you know, I hear some stories about actually um, more going on. But having said that, th um, what Sophia brought up uh, that I think is really essential is we have, you know, I was estimating um, the two triage groups, right? One are people who have complex medical conditions. Another would be people with acute behavioral conditions that are at home right now around the clock. And they may have support. But as the, uh, uh, they probably do not have adequate support, right? The odds are probably 90% um, for most of them that they don't because of the number of hours that have to be covered that would not have been anticipated. So how do we solve that? And, and so there's the first group where things will get taxing as each day goes on and potentially people will get ill. Uh, and, and I'd include in that group the older caregivers, right? That carry, I don't know what the numbers are. Do you remember the numbers? that we knew just from DDS, not including outside of DDS? Um, I don't, no, okay. not off the top of my head. It's surprisingly high, and it makes sense if you think someone's not in a community residence, they're you know, in a day program. Remember, there's 10 to 11,000 in a day program. There's about uh, 10,000 in day habilitation services. Some of that is a duplicate count, but assume 17,000 people, um, of which 70% live with family, and that, doesn't cloud, that does not include school age, right? Children and teens, you know, we're talking about people that might be 17, 18, 20 at home. So I think um, we, t we, we need to work together and advocate together um, to make sure that there's a plan starting to get some additional help. And then the question becomes, is that additional help gonna be trained well enough to go into more than one home? Do we have enough personal protective equipment to pull that off? Or does each trainee just get to go to one home? And how many hours can, can be funded to go into those homes, right? 
So those are the kinds of the, you know, the, the, those, the planning that has to go into it. And it's gotta be, are there enough, are the day staff now all tied up with people in group homes and people getting family support and delivering food, delivering medicine, right? We don't know. So that's the level of coordination between Mass Health, Department of Mental Services, on the mental health side, Department of Mental Health, you know, and, and uh, Mass Health, um, to some extent with the Mass Rehab Commission, so the independent living centers for people with physical disabilities and some developmental disabilities, right? So we're talking about a complex, um, short, this is like got to be figured out in a few days um, if we're going to get people ready to go into homes. So that's, okay. I'm not trying to raise anxiety. I'm, I just think we need to work at it together. Any ideas people want to shoot into us uh, around that kind of planning would be great. And it's got to be geographically figured out, right? Okay, and uh, Kathy has a question. Um, any word on getting 90-day prescriptions for controlled substances? Also, oh, heard, using uh, SNAP yeah, online. Uh, yeah, so what I see online, and people are telling me it's still not, let me go right to the page, that it's still not as broad as it could be. It's broader than it is nationally. The national legislation um, is, is tighter. I'm going to the, we have, if you go to the COVID-19 page and you jump, to, I'm going to go right now to the pharmacy piece. Here it is. I'm going to pull open PDF copy. I haven't read this since five, six days. So it was expanded um, to include, uh, but I, I don't think 100% of those substances, but a significant number of those substances were expanded. So I don't know how much there's an anxiety about people with mental health conditions having some of those drugs in their hands. Um, that might be stopping it, but we'll, maybe we can um, get that figured out, um, Kerry. And maybe I could get, I'm going to write down right now to follow up on that and find out what medications and why they're not included in the 90 day. Okay. Okay. All right. And um, also, she was wondering about using SNAP online. Um, you're gonna, I'm going to have to look because I read that. I think that was one of the early ones too. Hold on a second. That would be under um, Department of Transitional Assistance. Um, let me hit that and then hit snap. I know that we posted, um, what do we post? Um, the food, you know, places where you can get food, uh, that is on the website under, I don't know if it's local resources. Let me check on that really quick. In other words, uh, okay, going back to our page, it's either local or I think it's under urgent needs. Yeah. Um, food, this we posted, find other local food bank, a link that gets you other local food banks as well as then a direct link to the Greater Boston Food Bank. Now, while I'm on the SNAP page, let me see Kona coronavirus update. Uh, you may be eligible for SNAP using your EBT card. Yeah, there's got to be a SNAP thing for Corona. We're going to have to, oh, emergency SNAP benefits. Um, they need food assistance within seven days. Um, I, you know, what I'm going to suggest, the helpline. Um, 877-382-2363, 877-382-2363. I'll, I'll be shocked. Um, there is, oh, there is a, there is an app, uh, on their website. Um, it's called DTA Connect Now. Visit DTA Connect Now. And, um, we will post that as well. I'm going to send it over. But for now, it's, it's um, I'm trying to think, Carrie, if I can put it into the presentation, DTA, you know, maybe I'll, I'll put it into the presentation for now. Just a bunch. Okay. Bunch. okay. Yep. So you got a few more questions here. Um, of, uh, you know, there's a, a several thank yous for this. Um, Leo, this is from Tom, a 70 uh, plus year old friend of ours with a daughter in residential services was, was told that if her daughter gets sick, 
they would have to they would send her home. Can you comment on that? Um, wow. Okay. Uh, I think it's different at different residential services. Um, I have not heard that. I know it's a large agency that doesn't, you know, happen to be an affiliate. And I know they, they've been cranking their heads out on this in terms of the chapters. I had three chapters early last week, like Monday or Tuesday already looking for, um, backup shelter strategies, not just for like, their people, just, just in general in the area. You know, where are we going to put people either that don't have the virus temporarily or do have the virus and care for them away from the people that don't have the virus? You know what I'm saying? So I'm sort of surprised to hear that. Um, I, be, I believe it. I, I think we're going to need to figure that out um, and ask, you know, DDS, I guess. Is this a DDS residence? Could the person chat back or tell us if it's a DDS funded program or a different state agency? It's a, DDS, hey, um, it's a DDS funded program. Okay, thanks. So we need to we need to ask. I have a call later today. Yeah, uh, Leo, she got this uh, in a letter from the from the residents. Um, oh, is this Tom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah let us look. Yeah, I'm I'm, yeah. I'm surprised. Okay, because like I said, they're, they're in in Bristol County. They were already looking for something beyond them because they do mostly shared living and stuff like that. So they were yeah. just looking for that region. What can we do? This is, a, this is a residential, 24-7 residential program. And I appreciate you not saying the name of the agency. I appreciate it. You can always text it to us privately, though. Okay. <laughs> yeah. we, you know, and we can then, okay. yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, I'm, I'm, again, I'm not surprised, too. Some places are just overwhelmed. They might have lost staff. They might. Don't, don't they have a contract? Have PPE, right? If they don't have personal protective equipment, right? what they're looking ahead on. So let's, let's look at it from their point of view for a second, even though I'm surprised and, you know, not totally supportive of that behavior. I'm assuming it's the lack, again, this whole freaking situation with personal protective equipment that I can't, I don't understand it in a rich country like America. And so they, if they don't have enough gloves, they don't have enough sanitizer, right? Think about it. It's, it would be a fear that they would then spread it to everybody. So, but you're right, sending it to a 70 year old parent, it's like the students that went home from the colleges, right? Well, uh, I don't think she could handle it. That's the question. It's right, putting right. both people at risk. So I would say what I would do, so my advice, Tom, you should tell the person is um, start now planning with DDS in case it happens for an alternative situation. Yeah, well, um, my wife suggested she would talk to her doctor and get a letter saying that that's a great idea too. The unsafe That's situation idea. for the yeah. resident. Yeah. Excellent idea. But and and um, in the meantime, she sent a letter to her area office, not just to the service waiter. I would copy the area director and say, "Look, we're I'm frightened to death. You know, it clearly we need more some more planning." And I know groups have been talking about that planning. Um, I think people are trying to figure out how they you know segregate people from day one on this thing. You know, how can they both take care of those that get the virus and those and protect those that don't have it. Um, yeah, well, thanks, Leo. I think you have a few more questions that I, I, I can, uh, I can uh, talk to you by email. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Lisa was wondering, um, you know, thanks, thanks us for the information. She's still though confused about who gets money and who doesn't. What about my son who does not get social security? Any help for him out there? Does he pay tax? If he has a tax return, yeah, he's going to get, in three weeks, you're going to have a check. That's really, that's the thing, right? So, okay. yeah. It's, All right. Uh, and then Beth, um, Beth uh, said that her son uses SNAP, and but they won't allow it for food deliveries. Fixing this would be great because it forces him into the grocery store. All right. Let me, that's a good let me, comment. Please build a list. Yeah, no, I I get it yeah food delivery it's yep and then rebecca uh was just sharing that many cities are offering senior check-ins by calls and some are providing pop-up harvest markets for example salem together is providing daily calls to seniors with or without disabilities as well as delivery of food for folks who can't get out they'll also deliver information um, medication and this is a city to city effort. So check with your city website or contact the mayor's um, office. Great idea. And, and, and you know what else um, on Beth's question, I just realized day program providers, assuming it's DDS funded or DDS connected in some way, the individual, the, uh, unless it's 
someone I know, and he, well, even if he's under 22, he, um, he could be connected through family support, right? So I would reach out to the family support agency and say, you know, we really need delivery given the situation as well as a second option. But I will note that. And then that way for free, somebody's delivering the food, right? And you're yeah. saving more of your SNAP dollars. Just something to think about. Okay, so um, I don't see any other questions. It looks like our time is up. So thanks everyone for joining us today. And um, I just want to repeat, well. yeah, Tuesday at 11, Thursday at 11, Friday at noon. Those are the next webinars and um, as well. Thanks, Carrie. Thank you all. Take care and stay okay. healthy. Take care. Thanks, Leo. You're welcome. Thank you, Leo. Take Have care. a great week. Thank you. Stay safe. Thank you.